In my last video, I pointed out the absurdity of trying to model our world using this monster sun and this tiny earth, when what we actually observe is so much different. I pointed out that at an angular size of half a degree, the sun is actually 1 720th the size of the earth's circumference, which works out to 1 229th the size of the earth's diameter. This triggered certain heliocentrists, who then made it their life's mission to spout a bunch of number crunching mishmash in an effort to expose the inaccuracy of my claim. But my reasoning was simple. If this sun has an angular size of half a degree, and if this horizon is part of a ball with a radius of 3,959 miles, then it would take 720 suns to span the circumference of that ball and 229 of them to span its diameter. Maybe this image will help. How many of those suns would it take to span the diameter of that earth? And is the actual number really all that important? The point I was making is that the sun, as we see it, is much smaller than the earth, which flies in the face of all those NASA illustrations that show a huge sun compared to a tiny earth. Anyway, as Harry pointed out, thereby reiterating what I said in my last video, once we've established the angular size of half a degree, we can then imagine that the sun is 100 times bigger than the earth and 90 million miles away, or 50 times bigger than the earth and 45 million miles away, or even that the sun actually is smaller than the earth and only a few thousand miles away. All we can be sure of is that the sun is tiny compared to the earth when viewed from the earth. And let's face the facts here. All of those sizes and distances are merely speculation from people standing on the earth and looking at lights in the sky. So just because you might believe in the hundred times bigger than earth speculation doesn't mean that we have to, because after all, it is only speculation. That being said, since I'm attempting to refute the heliocentric model, I must use that model in order to refute it. So as I now add the moon to our earth and sun discussion, I give the ball earthers back their monster sun. Before we get too far, I need to clear up a common misconception about peak new moon and peak full moon. This is how I explained it in a video from back in May. Picture this red line as the top-down view of a plane that dissects the earth and the sun. In the heliocentric model, the moon passes this plane twice per orbit. When it passes the plane on the sun side, it is a new moon. And when the moon is perfectly dissected by the plane, it is peak new moon. The moment when sun, earth, and moon are perfectly aligned on that plane. When it passes the plane opposite of the sun, it is a full moon. And when the moon is perfectly dissected by the plane on that side, it is peak full moon. The moment when sun, earth, and moon are perfectly aligned on that plane. And this is how I explained it in a video from back in July. So what's that got to do with the heliocentric model? This is the alignment during new moon. We have the earth here. We have the moon directly between the earth and the sun. They're all on the same line. Actually, it's a plane. You'll have to think of this as you know, a plane coming straight out towards you and going beyond them into the wall. They're all aligned on the same plane during new moon. Unfortunately, this explanation caused some confusion for Dazza the cameraman, who said what you described as peak new moon would have to be a total solar eclipse and what you described as peak full moon would have to be a total lunar eclipse. Adrenaline was similarly confused and said, Dear Mike, you need to try and get it out of your head that the earth, moon, and sun are in a direct line every new and full moon. They're not, not by a long stretch. Otherwise, we'd have a total solar eclipse every new moon and a lunar eclipse every full moon. Many others were having similar confusion, so let's clear it up starting with what timeanddate.com says. The new moon is when the sun and moon are aligned with the sun and earth on opposite sides of the moon. At new moon, the sun, the moon, and earth are in alignment, technically known as a syzygy. Of course, this is all I've been saying as well. I've even been using time and dates diagrams to illustrate what I'm saying. So why doesn't this new moon syzygy automatically result in a solar eclipse if the sun, earth, and moon are all perfectly bisected by this plane? 
because the moon must also be bisected, or nearly so, by this other plane at the same time for a solar eclipse to occur. This is just the side view of that previous image. And while the top-down view showed the moon in perfect syzygy with the earth and the sun on one plane, eclipses require the moon to be aligned on two planes at the same time. So while every peak new and peak full moon are in perfect syzygy alignment with regards to the top-down plane, eclipses only occur when the moon is aligned, or nearly so, on that vertical plane from the previous image and this horizontal plane at the same time. Here's a 3D demonstration that might help. Okay, here's our Earth, here's our Sun. Don't be alarmed, ball earthers. The Sun is really a trillion times bigger than the Earth and a zillion miles away. But this is just for demonstrations, okay? So, in the heliocentric model, which all of this is heliocentric model, none of this crap I believe in, but here's our Earth with its 23.4 degree tilt, and it's rotating around to the east. As it does that, it's slowly orbiting the sun while it's rotating, slowly orbiting the sun, and a year later, bam, we're right back here where we started, okay? All right, my point is at any given time, any given orientation, you can mentally construct a plane that runs vertically through the middle of the sun and the middle of the earth. Doesn't matter if the earth is rotated here, doesn't matter if it has orbited over to here, you can still do that top-down plane through the, directly through the Earth, directly through the Sun. Any time you want. It's not a real plane. It doesn't really exist. It's a mental construct. Through the middle of the Sun, cutting down through the middle of the Earth. Okay? Always. Now, between the Sun and the Earth, there is also this ecliptic plane, a horizontal plane that's also cutting directly through the center of the sun and directly through the center of the earth on the horizontal axis. Okay, those are the two planes that are always there. Doesn't matter where you move it, doesn't matter how you rotate it. Those planes are always there. Vertical, straight down, horizontal, cutting it in half sideways. Okay, so now, we're going to bring in the moon. There's our moon. Yes, it's not to scale. Okay, so if the moon orbited the Earth equally on this ecliptic plane, the one that cuts the sun and the Earth in half, if it orbited perfectly around that plane, then every new moon, when the Earth or the moon was between the earth and the sun, we would have a solar eclipse. Okay? But we're told the moon does not do that. The moon actually orbits sometimes down below the earth, sometimes back up above it, sometimes it's higher than that ecliptic plane. They say it's got a five degree uh, inclination. Sometimes it's up here. Sometimes it's down here when it passes the sun. Okay, that's why we don't get the solar eclipse every single month. But no matter where you put this moon, that plane, that vertical plane between the sun and the earth that's bisecting both of them, at new moon, peak new moon, it will perfectly bisect the moon too. If it does that when the moon is down here on this horizontal plane as well, we'll have that eclipse. But even if the moon is passing higher or lower, we still have that vertical plane going through it. So every peak new moon, we are being dissected. One plane is dissecting, sun bisecting. Sun, moon, earth. Okay, same for full moon, it's the exact same plane, cutting through the middle of the sun, cutting through the middle of the earth, 
cutting through the middle of the moon, only the moon is on the opposite side of the earth from the sun. Okay, same deal here. Why isn't that always a lunar eclipse? Well, because sometimes the moon is up here as it's coming around in its orbit. Sometimes it's down here below the ecliptic plane. So we're not gonna get the shadow of the earth on the moon. It's gotta be, it doesn't have to be perfectly on this horizontal plane, it's gotta be pretty close. But the point is every single peak full moon, the same vertical plane that cuts through the sun and the earth bisects the moon as well. It's a syzygy. It's a perfect alignment on that one plane. Doesn't necessarily mean the moon is also aligned on this horizontal plane at the same time, okay? Every month it will be aligned on the vertical plane. Only some months will it align on the vertical plane and the horizontal plane at the same time. Goes both ways. Over here for the solar eclipse, only when it aligns on both planes will it be an eclipse. I hope that helps. Here's a 30 second NASA video that will also help. Note that this is the top down view of peak new moon. So this top down plane is perfectly bisecting the sun, earth, and moon. Whether or not the horizontal plane that bisects the sun and earth is also bisecting the moon. The same goes for peak full moon when the top down plane perfectly bisects sun, earth, and moon. The video didn't have a frame where the moon was perfectly aligned, but I'm sure you get the point. And again, this perfect syzygy will happen every single peak full moon, regardless of whether or not the moon is also aligned on the horizontal plane at that time. Oh, and just as a side note, notice that NASA has used the realistic Earth shadow in this video since they're focusing on solar eclipses instead of the completely unsubstantiated conical shadow they made up out of thin air. I thought that was funny. So now they're going to show us the earth from the side, including that horizontal plane that always bisects the earth and the sun, so they can show why every new moon doesn't result in a solar eclipse. But remember, even though we're not getting an eclipse here because the moon isn't aligned on the horizontal plane, that peak new moon you're looking at is still perfectly aligned with the sun and the earth on the vertical plane. Same here. But when the sun, earth, and moon align on both planes, then you'll get your eclipse. So now let's go back to Bill and Jane where they're both seeing half of the sun from opposite terminator lines because the sun is so huge. If you'll recall, Bill's horizon is the blue line and he can see all of the sun above it. Jane's horizon is the pink line and she can see all of the sun below it. Neither of them can see the thin black line through the middle of the sun, as it's blocked by the earth on which they stand. So now I'm just going to zoom in on the earth and place a peak new moon in between the earth and the sun. This is the earth and peak new moon to scale. And here are Bill and Jane's same horizon lines. I'm going to end this video with a simple question. We'll agree, for argument's sake, that Bill and Jane can see almost half of the sun from their Terminator lines. Can they see the moon too?